Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to paint this cute little clip art. As you can see, this painting doesn't look perfect. It shows a lot of watermarks and it's meant to be like that. If you like this style, please keep on watching. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the Sublime Watercolor Pack and the wood canvas that is included in the pack. Everything will be linked below. I've drawn a sketch for you guys, so if you'd like, you can download it and insert it like this. You can go to add and insert a photo. The photo has been inserted and that's the sketch right here. And you'll need to make a new layer on top so that you can start to color. I've also developed a color palette that you can download, but I won't be using the exact colors because as you paint, you might need different variations of these shades. As for the brush, I'm going to be using the hard edge round brush. I have selected a very light beige and now I'm just going to color the stocking here and there. I'm not going to paint the entire stocking and you'll see why in a second. This light beige is going to be the base color and once you've filled in the stocking quite a bit, you can select the next beige here and this one is slightly darker. The reason why I'm using multiple variations of this shade is to prevent a digital painting from looking too flat. It is best to use different variations of the same color and blend it out to make it look like real watercolor when it dries. The stocking is completely filled in now so we're going to get this basic blender and blend out these overlaps and get rid of any harsh edges. But you don't have to blend every single point because real watercolor when it dries, it might still have some of these overlaps or these hard edges. Unless you like really perfect looking watercolor pieces, you can leave some of these overlaps or watermarks just to make it look more authentic. At this point, I'm not so happy with the color, so I'm going to go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness and just play around with the color. After adjusting the color, I made a new layer so that I can start coloring the pocket. I'm using a light green here. Again, I'm using different variations of this light green. Just like before, you'll want to blend out all of these different types of greens. I'm still unhappy with the color of the stocking, so I'm going to go back to that layer and go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness and fix the color once again. Just like how we've colored the other elements, you'll want to make a new layer and color the teddy bear with a light brown. You can layer the same color over on areas that will have shadows. So I'm coloring over the sides of this bear as well as the ears. And this will make the bear look have some volume. I'm coloring in a circular motion so that I can show a little bit of that fuzzy texture. You may want to slightly paint over the pencil lines in this case just to show that fuzziness. Next, you'll want to blend it all out using the basic blender. Let's make a new layer and we can pick out a color that is very similar to the color that we've just used. Go a little bit darker and we can try to kind of make little fleece, I guess. 
by using a bunch of these circles. It might be a tedious process, but it is really worth it in the end. When you zoom out, it looks a lot like fleece. So I'm just going to um, put these circles all around the bear. And after that's done, you can color in the nose and the eyes. After that, I'll color the ribbon blue. Feel free to use whatever color you like. Just to let you guys know, this is all on different layers. It's important to add darker variations of the same shade to make items look more 3D. Of course, you'll want to blend it all out. Also, I'm going to add little details like this using a dark red. I'm still using the hard edge round brush, but to make these lines look like watercolor rather than like a normal pencil, you can go over the line once again, but just along the bottom portion of that line so that you can see a little bit of that transparency. I'm going to line the top of this stocking as well. To make this piece look more authentic, I'm going to go back to the stocking layer and make a new layer on top and make that a clipping mask. And we're going to now get a light beige, like a pinkish color, slightly darker than this stocking. So it may be better if you just pull out that color from the stocking and get a darker color. And we're going to use these stamps. You can experiment with every one of them, but I'm going to start off with this one and just use it here and there and use the splotch next. These stamps can add in blooms and watermarks that will make this clip art look a little bit more hand-drawn and show some imperfections. Finally, I'm going to add in a little tree using the same red that I've used to draw the sewing lines. And that's it guys. Sometimes Digital watercolor can look too perfect and tidy, so I wanted to show how you can achieve a realistic look by using multiple colors and stamps. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that notification bell and like this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.